You're nobody till somebody loves you. You always whining about some bitch that left you a year ago. It was six months ago, and she didn't leave me. Whatever, oh. man. You're like a fucking little whiny bitch, man. Oh, Whoopi, you got a number tonight? You're gonna fuck it up. Hey, Sue. No, you know what? Have you gotten laid? Have you gotten laid once since you moved out here? Have you fucked once? All right, Sue, once? why don't you shut the fuck up No, you know what? I know for a fact that you haven't. You know how I know? Because you never shut up about it. You're like a little right, whiny shut bitch. shut the fuck up, Sue. Yeah, fucking right. Shut up. Hey, Mike, come here. Mike, come back here. Mike, come back here. Swingers, directed by Doug Lyman, written by Jon Favreau, and released in 1996. Baby, this movie is money. I absolutely, positively love Swingers. Mike, played by Jon Favreau, who is trying to get over his ex, and he's trying to, you know, deal with it by being more social. Excuse me? What kind of a car do you drive? Uh, Cavalier. It's red. I have a red, it's a red Cavalier. Uh, through his uh, friend Trent, who is trying to get him out of the slump that he is in, but Mike doesn't want to get out of it because in the words of Rob, played by Ron Livingston. It's like you almost missed that pain. And I like Ron Livingston in this movie. Ron Livingston's character, I would say, is the real best friend to Mike's John Favreau here. Even though we do, and I look at it as yeah, Trent is the real friend to Mike. But when I watched the movie again just recently, it appears to me that Rob and Mike are the real true best friends because of this line right here. Look, man, uh, I'm, I'm sorry we always talk about the same thing all the time. Uh, it's just that, you know, no, but you, right. you know, it's just you've been there, man, and don't your advice me, really man. helps. Yeah. And I just, I don't know what, I, you know, Rob, you're the only one I could talk to about her. Whereas with Trent, in the scene where Trent is leaving Mike messages, Mike just skips the message. And it's not until Trent calls him and says, Vegas! Vegas, baby, Vegas! We, we deal with a lot of funny scenes. Like, I love the casino scene in the movie. It's very funny. You know, guys like me and you gotta kick it here, old school. Yeah, this is, this is truly old school. Definitely old school. This place is fucking dead. And I love the scene where Mike and Trent hook up with these two beautiful ladies. Well, who's your booking agent? <laughs> you know, I, actually, I'm, I don't have West Coast representation as of yet. Oh, well, who's your representation back east? I didn't. I sort of freelanced on my own, kind of like found my own things, because I. So, what do you do, Trent? And while Trent is doing the nasty, Mike. Uh, completely interrupts Trent's uh, sexual pursuit. She's with somebody else now. Already? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. You know what? It won't last. Why not? It's a rebound. I'm sure she'll call. Trent. Trent. I need to, uh, you... No, I'm... I gotta, use the, I gotta use the phone. I'm sure I, yeah, we weren't in there that long. I don't think we're interrupting anything. You can say on a surface level it's just a goofy, you know, bro comedy. Which it is, but I feel like internally it's more than that. It's not a deep story and we don't get an extensive background history lesson on these characters. We're pretty much dealing with just surface level stuff right here, but I like the dynamic between all of these characters, right? Like with Mike and Trent arguing back and forth. The best thing you can do is just get back out there. It's just, I, I'm not attracted to them. I keep thinking of my girlfriend. 
and, and then I'm trying to, like, maintain a conversation with them. And oh, I, Mike, do you even think I know what the hell they're saying to me half the time? That stuff is money, baby, because we know about Trent's anxiety without him explaining it. It's just his in his mannerisms and the way he behaves. So we know Mike is a bit of uh, he, he's probably dealing with some sort of anxiety and, you know, he can't get over his relationship in the past. And, you know, he's not very sociable. I mean, he is, but then he's also got like some awkward, nervous tics, which is beautifully executed in this movie. I feel like John Favreau's probably just playing an extended version of himself here. He's playing it so well. And then we have Trent, who is more of the live wire kind of guy who really doesn't give a shit about what people think of him. I don't have to be like to everyone. <laughs> Some people don't like me. I don't like certain people. Uh, you know, he's just out to, you know, get the hot, beautiful babies. Baby, this is what we came here for. Now, we met a beautiful baby and she likes you. She likes you. Whatever, daddy's gonna get her to bring a friend. Now, I don't care if I end up with her, but one of her beautiful baby friends. And it's great, and seeing these two argue back and forth is great. Seeing their dynamic here is fantastic. It really feels like these two have been friends for a long time. And then we have Rob, you know, who is dealing with trying to become an actor. He's a struggling actor. And in the way he's dealing with it, he's he always feels like he's depressed. I'm considering taking a part as Goofy. <laughs> Well, Lisa's Disney, right? Yeah. We're going to uh, we're going to this party in the hills. And in the very emotional scene at the end, where Ron Livingston should have been nominated for an Academy Award. You gotta let go of the past, and Mikey, when you do, I'm telling you, the future is beautiful. All right, look out the window. It's sunny every day here. It's like manifest destiny. Don't tell me we didn't make it. We made it. We are here. And everything that has passed is prologue to this. All of the shit that didn't kill us is only, you know, all that shit. Stuff is fantastic. So like I said, yes, on the surface level, it's just a goofy bro comedy movie. But on the inside of that, it is dealing with some uh, emotional subject matter here as far as you know relationships go as far as uh people who want to actually get a career and make something of themselves and people who just want to you know party it up meet hot beautiful babies and it doesn't always work out some people are playboys some people aren't I feel like the context of the movie, it has a, a very deep meaning to it, I feel, with the music. Because the song at the beginning that is performed by Frank Sinatra. You may be king, you may possess the world and its gold, but gold won't bring you happiness when you're growing old. And that's what, where I think Mike's character is. Like, yes, Mike is hanging out with Trent. He's trying to pick up on some hot, beautiful babies through the encouragement of his friends. So how long do I wait to call? A day. Tomorrow. Mm -mm, tomorrow, then a day. Yeah. So two days. Yeah, I guess you could call it that. Definitely. Two days. Two days is like industry standard. No, I used to wait two days to call anybody, but now it's like everyone in town waits two days. So I think three days is kind of money. What do you think? Yeah, well, but two's enough not to look anxious. Yeah, know? two's enough not to look anxious, but I think three days is kind of money. Yeah, you know? but because you know you, what? You're... Maybe I'll wait three weeks. How's that? And tell her I was cleaning up my wallet and I just happened to run into her number. <laughs> then ask her where you met her. Yeah, I'll ask her where I met her. I don't remember. What does she look like? And then I'll ask if we fucked. Is that, would that be <laughs> tea? Would that be the money? He's a one woman man, whereas Trent and Sue I feel they're swingers, you know? They like to mingle around in the in the gene pool of women and just have their way with them and pick and choose who they want to be with and they don't want to be tied down. Whereas Mike, he feels like he is nobody until somebody loves him. And I love the opening to this movie because when you see all these images, the first time I saw it, I said to myself, oh, they're just random Im images of people hanging out. But when you listen to the music and you look at the images, we're living in the 2000s, right? And this movie came out in the mid-90s. So the atmosphere was a bit different. But I feel that 
with the society that we live in, the society of people who can go out and go to a bar, hang out with their friends, and have an entertaining night, regardless of what culture you identify with. Pretty much everybody wants the same thing, to go out and have a good time with their friends, family, by themselves, whoever. And with a situation like this, swingers taking place in the 90s and the era we're in now, I feel like when people go to a bar and they have a few drinks, they want to be social. They want to hang out. They want to be positive. They want to have a good time. You know, they want to get that liquid courage in them so they can go ahead and perform some sick ass dance moves, you know, or they want to do some karaoke or something, you know, they want to loosen themselves up so they can have a good time, right? And that has not changed. So that's why I feel like Swingers is a movie that is timeless, regardless of what uh, era it takes place in, regardless as to whether or not these people are hipsters. That's besides the point, because when I watch Swingers, it seems to me like stuff like this is still going on today. But that's why I love Swingers, man, because it feels like a timeless classic it's a classic to me it's got some of the most funniest lines i've ever heard in a comedy and it takes a lot for me to laugh like i laugh at stupid shit all the time and as far as comedy movies are concerned they don't make me laugh because the comedy feels forced but with swingers it feels so natural it feels so smooth because the movie takes place in the real world but then it does have some elements in there which make me feel like okay we don't have an answering machine that does this. You have to put things in perspective. And a man seeing a woman as a bunny in a bar. Yeah, we know where he got that from. Don't you want me like a big bear with, with, with claws and with fangs, with man. fucking teeth, yeah, man. Yeah, fucking teeth on you. She's just like this little bunny who's just kind of cowering in the corner. Shivering. Yeah, man, just kind of... I love Swingers. I love this movie. It's money, baby. It's money. It's pure money. And that's why I feel that the gang needs to get back together and they need to have a reunion and make Swingers 2, baby. Yeah! I have a new booking agent, though, so I'm part of the whole Vegas circuit. Money's pretty good. I might buy a car, I think, you know, a foreign car. Treat myself. I'm, you know, I figure I work for it. Why not? I know where it is. Starbucks. I served you an espresso at Starbucks. Espresso, Sorry, but... an espresso. Yes, that's my drink. That's <laughs> probably it. That's great. Isn't that funny? You came in and, and, and asked me for an application, and then I took you and introduced you to my manager. Must have been a while ago, because I'm, you know, right now I have a booking agent, because I've been, you know, booking, I have a booking agent now that I got, he's part of, uh... No. Yeah. No, I think it was about two weeks ago. It was probably more, probably longer, because it's, things have been going very well lately, so I haven't been looking for a job in a while. You could even somebody who looks like me, because a lot of people who look kind of similar, I have a face that's similar. I didn't want to think I was, uh, weird or desperate or... Mike? Nikki! Great! Did, did you just uh, walk in, or were you, were you listening all along? Don't ever call me again. Wow. I, I guess you're home. 